Hey Pretty Girl Club, so I wanted to make a follow-up to the video that I just released. It is the video where I talk about unambiguous black women gaslighting ambiguous black women for about 38 minutes straight. And it's so funny because somebody commented and they were like, oh, this is rage porn. Like you're just trying to get people to be upset. And I literally have not posted a video like that on this channel in years. I literally have hundreds of videos talking about not just other topics, but also discussing solutions to the isms or ways that you can learn how to navigate in this society that we live in. And yes, it's a messed up society we live in, but this channel has so many other talking points and there are thousands of other BWE, Black Women Empowerment channels that try to discredit us and call us ugly and call us all kinds of names as you guys saw. And nobody calls them out and says that they are making rage porn and that they are, you know, making these videos that they shouldn't be making. So why is it that people are flocking to this channel to suddenly try to police what I say? I don't know how many times I have to say this, but we are not scared of you over here. This will continue to be a safe space where we will discuss whatever issues we see fit. But I want to talk about pretty privilege and how a lot of times when women are jealous of other women, kind of like what you saw in that last video, it was all going back to the concept of pretty privilege and who has it and who doesn't. I've noticed that one of the YouTubers, she was talking about um, her dating this guy or whatever on this dating show and how that woman has dented up thighs and she looks like she eats ham hocks and you know, she was kind of body shaming her saying that she's out of shape and that she doesn't look good enough to deserve the attention of that guy that was on the show. But I've said this plenty of times, there are thousands of different types of pretty privilege. I believe that beauty is very subjective. I also believe that um, some people have their own personalized internal beauty standard. Other people tend to go along with uh, public beauty standards. So, but once again, there are many different popular beauty standards. There is a white beauty standard, there's a black beauty standard, you know what I mean? So every single group, and depending on where you live in the world, there are going to be different beauty standards. But I've noticed that the women that get jealous of you, they are mad at the type of pretty privilege you have. So if you look at those videos where they were getting mad at mixed women, oftentimes those women were mad at the type of pretty privilege those women had, which was having pretty privilege around professional black men. And by the way, I'm not shaming anyone. If that's your type and that's what you want to date, then so be it. But one thing women need to think about is what type of pretty privilege do I want? Because one thing I've noticed about women who become bitter and angry at the pretty girl is those women did not take the time to think about what type of beauty they wanted to have. So for example, if your type is I want a professional black man, then the next question you would ask yourself is what type of woman on average, would a professional black man like? And then you get to decide whether you are willing to change yourself to meet that standard if you don't meet it, like if you weren't born meeting that standard. So you get to decide whether you want to change yourself to meet that or whether you want to never have that privilege for the rest of your life, like never be able to access that type of pretty privilege. Because what a lot of people don't realize is that everyone has certain privileges and everyone does not have access to other privileges. For example, if you are able-bodied, you have able-bodied privilege. If somebody has one leg and they are mad at people who are able-bodied, they have a choice. They can either do what it takes to try to get some sort of prosthetic leg or, you know, find some way to get in to have access to that privilege, even if it means doing it in a quote-unquote fake way, getting a fake item to place on your body that will give you access into spaces that you didn't have access to before. The same thing is true when it comes to pretty privilege. So if you want to be a traditional supermodel, for example, they have very strict standards on body weight and body size and type. So you have two choices, either change your body to fit that body type or never have access to that type of privilege. And what a lot of women are not doing is they're not being self-aware. So for a lot of those women in that previous video that were making fun of mixed women because they felt like we get picked, I guess, by black men, because um, I noticed that seemed to be kind of an underlying theme, what a lot of those women didn't do was be honest with themselves. Um, 
It's clear that pretty privilege, especially in the eyes of black men, was very important to those women. By the way, I'm not shaming anybody for their desires, but if something is strong enough to where it makes you depressed or it is powerful enough to control your emotions, then that means that that thing is one of your core values. And it means that you want that thing so bad to the point where if you don't have it, you will be angry, you will be depressed, um, you will not feel like your life is complete. And so for a lot of women who are male-centered, and for a lot of those women in that previous video, they were very black male-centered, pretty privilege was their vehicle to hopefully get love and commitment from a black guy. So what you have to ask yourself is, what type of pretty privilege do I want? Why do I want pretty privilege? Like if you were a perfect 10 out of 10, drop dead gorgeous, you have no flaws starting tomorrow, then what would you do? What would you pursue with that pretty privilege? Because that's actually a very important question to ask yourself because it's going to help you to recognize what kind of pretty privilege will work best for you. And also the reason why I don't shame women who change themselves to attain certain pretty privileges is because Everybody has a reason for why they do certain things. So obviously those women that get mad at us, they wanted to be pretty so that they can catch the attention of a black guy and I guess have, I don't know, maybe marriage or be provided for or have some 50-50 relationship. So whatever their goals were, that is why they wanted to have that pretty privilege. For the women who bash celebrities and they bash women who get more media opportunities than them, those women seek status. They really, really want status. Status is extremely important to them to the point where it can literally make them feel depressed and sad if they do not have that status. By the way, I'm not shaming that because I happen to be one of those people. Some people are very status driven and so they care a lot about societal representation or like representation amongst a large audience, like millions of people. You know, they don't just want to be the pretty girl in their neighborhood. They want someone who looks like them to represent them in the eyes of the world. These are people who are very status driven. And so if they feel like they don't have status in society, they will literally become depressed. They will become very sad. And that's because one of their deepest core desires and one of their core values was having high social status or being associated with glamour. So for example, like when I think of somebody like Beyonce, I think of someone who has a lot of glamour, someone who's known for like her beauty and talent and stuff. So as someone who shares a similar phenotype, I subconsciously associate my phenotype with that and others associate my phenotype with that or they're more likely to associate my phenotype with that. So some people are very status driven. They want to look like a celebrity or they want celebrities to look like them so that it can improve their social status in everyday life. They want people in their everyday life to perceive them as looking like Miss Universe or looking like a pageant queen. And again, I'm not shaming anyone for their desires, but what a lot of people do is they try to pretend like they are this self-righteous person and they try to pretend like they're so above it all, like you're so above societal beauty standards, you're so much better than everybody, you're so deep, you're so woke to the point where, oh, well, I don't care about that. And it's like, no, deep down inside, you actually care very deeply because not only are you going out of your way to put down people who do have that privilege, but you're so passionate about it to the point where you will make whole entire YouTube videos and channels calling women ugly or calling women the names of animals because that's how threatened you feel with their social status. And have you ever noticed how a lot of people, they will try to put down women and say, well, you're not pretty enough to be talking that kind of shit. You're not talented enough to have the position you have, Ice Spice. And that's because of status. Those people are very status driven. They wish that they had that position in the music industry or they wish that someone with their own phenotype had that type of position in Hollywood so that they themselves can be associated with celebrity culture. So those are the people who center a part of their self-esteem around Hollywood's standards. So those people, they value what Hollywood has to say. And like I said, I'm not shaming anyone, but they pedestalize what Hollywood has to say. They value what Hollywood has to say and whatever Hollywood promotes or whatever the media promotes in general, maybe it's not just Hollywood. It could also be social media, any form of media. So whatever the media promotes, that directly affects their sense of self-esteem and status. And by the way, I am one of these people, so I'm not shaming anybody else. I deeply care 
about the type of media that is put out with women who look like me, which is why I'm a content creator. That's why I decided to represent myself instead of constantly begging others to be my representation. I decided to represent myself and do what I can to help us as MLS and ABW look better in the media. But I'm saying all that to say that when you are going on your pretty privilege journey, you have to decide for yourself what you deeply care about. And by the way, the way that you can determine your core values is if you look at what your depression triggers are, that will tell you what's the most important to you. So for example, do you have any insecurities that are so strong to the point where you will literally, you can get depressed over them? So for me, I do, um, like my weight. If I am fat, I will literally, that can make me depressed. Like if I look really bad, you know, I've got like five chins or something, um, I can't fit any of my clothes. Okay, so that tells me that being thin is extremely important to me to the point where it's one of my core values. That is something that is a piece of my self-esteem. And so a part of your pursuit of having pretty privilege, whatever that means to you, a part of pursuing pretty privilege is about recognizing your own insecurities, recognizing your own, I call them micro insecurities. So they're small insecurities. They may not take over your whole life. Maybe they don't make you depressed, but it's enough to where maybe you don't like smiling because your teeth are crooked or Maybe you don't like to uh, show yourself from a side profile because you don't like ha how your side profile looks. All of those micro insecurities actually build up into bigger insecurities and they affect your overall self image. But a part of why I believe basic Bettys are so mad is because basic Bettys lack self-awareness. So they lie to themselves and pretend like they don't care about Hollywood's beauty standards or like they don't care about a man liking them or they don't care about being pretty when they actually do care and so when they encounter you someone who is pretty or someone who does have that type of privilege or you're kind of like leveling up that triggers them because it makes them question their own identity it makes them question their own beliefs and they are too afraid to face the fact that I want to be pretty but society tells me that I'm not and so instead of me um, choosing to meet society standards, I choose to work against them. And that's fine. You can be a social justice warrior if you want to. Not everybody wants to be pretty. You know, not everybody wants to conform to beauty standards or be skinny. Some people are like, no, that's fat phobic. Let me be fat in peace. And that is totally fine. You have a right to be a social justice warrior. But guess what? You're going to deal with the mental health struggles of being a social justice warrior. Not everyone wants to spend all of their time and energy trying to change everything in this world. I agree that we live in a very messed up, very shallow society. I agree that people are colorist, texturist, racist, prejudiced, and that's very bad that we live in that society. But I don't like to um, live my life based on what I want to see in the future. I like to deal with the present. I like to deal with the world that I'm in right now and the society that I live in right now at this moment. So as soon as all those YouTubers solve colorism, texturism, featureism, racism, and pretty privilege, classism, as soon as all of those things are solved, I will gladly change the talking points of my channel. But until then, I am going to talk about how to navigate in the world that we live in today, right now, because you don't want to spend all of your energy being a social justice warrior. You don't want to be out protesting and, you know, constantly having to sue people and report people for discriminating against your body and all that. You just want to be able to live a life that is as stress-free as possible because it is stressful. And it's like, which struggle do you want to have? You have to pick a struggle. Do you want the stress of having to constantly defend your position or do you want the stress of having to meet the beauty standards? Which stress do you want? There is no wrong answer. Would you rather have pretty girl problems or ugly girl problems? There's no wrong answer. Would you rather have the problem of being seen and being under a magnifying glass because you're on the pedestal? Or would you rather have the problem of being invisible constantly and never getting access to a pedestal? People are going to make different choices in life. And so this is why I don't shame women who change themselves so they can attain a certain pretty privilege. And I don't believe that we should shame people for their internal beauty standards. Just because I think that it's pretty on me to be skinny, that doesn't mean that I hate fat people or that I think it's ugly if you have curves. 
And I've noticed a lot of people hide behind isms so that they can shame others out of what they think is, is beautiful. So for example, if somebody says that they think Taylor Swift is the prettiest girl in the world, I don't call them racist. I don't say, well, you're a racist and white supremacist because the woman that you called the most beautiful has porcelain skin and like light hair and light eyes. So you are being featurist, colorist, texturist, and racist against anyone who does not meet that beauty standard. No, that statement lacks nuance. There are many different beauty standards. Beauty is extremely subjective and there are many different types of pretty privilege. So it's up to you to decide what pretty privilege is important to you. And also you want to think, what would I do if I looked perfect tomorrow? Would I try to be seen by a guy? Okay, so then that tells me that deep down inside, I want pretty privilege because I believe that pretty privilege will give me access to more dating options. For some of you, it's like if you had everything looking perfect tomorrow, you would start a YouTube channel or be an influencer or I don't know, go to Hollywood, be an actress or something, be a model. So for you, the reason you want pretty privilege is so you can have opportunities to be in front of a lot of people and like be seen and kind of like have a higher social status. So you like the social status and power that comes with the pretty privilege. Again, there's no wrong answer. That's actually who I am. I'm, I'm more of that type when it comes to pretty privilege because I think that when it comes to uh, male-centered pretty privilege, the problem is I'm a person that seeks control and so... I know that I can only control myself. So if I base my pretty privilege goal off of a man, like hopefully if I'm pretty enough, a man will pick me and then he will be faithful and loyal. I understand that that is not going to work long term because men change, you know, they make whatever decisions they want to make. Humans in general are very fickle. So I don't want to base my goals off of that. But you know what? There are some women who they just want to experience what it's like to be the pretty girl. So I understand that as well. Um, these are the women who maybe you grew up being like the basic Betty or maybe you were fat when you were a kid or something and now you've had a glow up and now you want to experience the other side and what it's like. Maybe you were like me and you were very religious and you were taught to dumb down your beauty as much as possible. So you didn't get to wear bikinis. Like I didn't grow up, I didn't wear bikinis and stuff. I couldn't wear two-piece swimsuits and crop tops and belly shirts and leggings and tight jeans. I didn't get to wear stuff like that. I couldn't wear my hair down. I couldn't wear red nail polish and red lipstick and stuff. So for some of you, you are seeking pretty privilege so that you can um, experiment with it and see how you like that identity. Some people like to put on certain identities and then take them off. You know, you want to experiment with different parts of your own identity. I talk about fluid identity on this channel all the time. So that's another valid reason uh, for wanting pretty privilege. But it's extremely important to ask yourself why you want the pretty privilege and do not shame yourself for the reason. A lot of people like to shame the pretty girl because they they themselves don't have the courage to pursue beauty. And so they will shame you and say, well, you only think you're cute because XYZ men told you that you're cute. You only think you're cute because you have long hair. And it's like, well, yeah, if that was her goal was, you know, I'm going to try to have long hair and then I'm going to see how it affects my confidence and then maybe I'll have more attention or more dating options or more validation, then that's her right to do that. Her feelings are valid. By the way, that's another reason that people pursue pretty privilege. It is for validation. It is normal to want to feel seen and to want to feel heard and validated. That ties into the whole idea of wanting status. So I, I'm like that myself. Yes, I do want my beauty to be appreciated. I want to appreciate my own beauty. And I also enjoy when others compliment, you know, how I did my hair or they compliment how I did my nails or they treat me special and stuff. So yes, I enjoy that myself. And a lot of people, they're too scared to talk about the things that I talk about on this channel. They're too scared to admit that you want to be validated. You want to be complimented. You want to have people gawk over you and like gawk over your features and be in awe because that skin tone combined with that eye color combined with that hair texture looks really pretty. So a lot of people, they're just too scared to admit that they want pretty privilege and they're scared to admit why they want pretty privilege or they're afraid to admit to themselves that they think that they are ugly. So they cannot admit that to themselves. So they would rather try to project that onto you and say, no, you're ugly. But in reality, that person thinks that they are ugly and they feel like their physical unattractiveness 
is holding them back in society. They feel like their physical unattractiveness is not giving them the life that they want. It's not giving them the social status that they want. It's not giving them the attention that they want. And so this is why I'm so passionate about sociology, which is the study of society and the study of social problems and how to overcome them. Um, What a lot of women won't admit to themselves is that their social disadvantages outweigh their social privileges. And by the way, like I said, there's nothing wrong with social climbing or wanting to have status, but the women who are self-righteous or, you know, they don't want to be associated with social climbing, they will become the social justice warriors. You know, that's where social justice warriors come, come from. And by the way, I am not shaming that at all because society wouldn't be where it is today if it weren't for social justice warriors who stood up for women's rights or people of color and stuff like that. So those women, they have their place. Social justice activists and stuff, they are needed in our society. So I will never, you'll never hear me come on YouTube and say, oh, all of these women's YouTube channels shouldn't exist and, you know, protests shouldn't exist. You'll never hear me say that because there is a place for warriors and soldiers and people who kind of stand up for what they believe in and people who want to fight for for change and stuff like that. But at the same time, there are also the more leisurely people who, you know, they don't want to fight the battles of the kingdom. They want to enjoy the spoils that they can get in the kingdom or they want to climb up in the aristocracy. They want to learn how to navigate in this messed up kingdom that they live in, you know, because you can't help where you were born. You can't help how you were born or the society that you live in. So for some people, myself included, they feel like it's easier for you to utilize whatever privileges you do have or try to build yourself up as much as you can so that you can at least create the best life for yourself and for your family. And then once you make it to the top, if you ever do, then you can enact that change or whatever. So I guess that's kind of the way I see it. I see it as I'm going to social climb as high as I can. And then I'm going to use my pedestal to talk about whatever I want. I will bestow my privileges upon whoever I want. I will cape for whoever was caping for me. So yes, I am absolutely watching other people. Yes, I'm examining how other people treat me, what other people say about those who are in privileged positions, because the same people who talk shit about those who are privileged are also the same people who beg for crumbs of that privilege. So you talk shit about billionaires, but you beg for higher wages. You beg for jobs at these billion dollar companies. You talk shit about Hollywood, but you beg for representation in Hollywood. You talk shit about people of other ethnicities, but then you beg for people of those ethnicities to represent you in their media. So all this BS where people try to privilege shame you, Um, I don't really think that it's a worthwhile way to spend my time because I'm better off utilizing whatever privileges I have or seeking after different privileges so that I can climb myself into a higher social position and then enact the change from that high social position as opposed to kind of fighting from the bottom. And like I said, you can absolutely fight from the bottom and make a difference because there are people who are kind of higher up who are listening to the people at the bottom, or maybe it benefits them to help the people at the bottom. This is how you get all of those disingenuous people in Hollywood who are like, oh yeah, Black Lives Matter, or you know, they they say that they support a certain cause, but even though they're helping you, they're really saying it because it just increases their social status. So I'm not shaming either of those things because both of those are survival mechanisms. Both of those things are kind of like a trauma response. And so it's up to you as an individual to decide which path works best for you. If you're a social justice warrior, this is not the channel for you. In fact, you will most likely be extremely offended by my content because you're going to see it like, oh, well, she's just being complacent. She's not trying to change anything. Yeah, because I don't have the energy to change other people or to try to change other people. But you know what I can do? I can change myself. And so that's what I choose to focus on. I choose to focus on changing myself. I choose to focus on climbing for myself or getting myself to a higher position. And then from there, if I feel like I have the power to enact change and it affects millions of people, then I can decide what I want to do. But until racism, colorism, texturism, featurism, pretty privilege, and all of these other prejudices don't exist, I am going to strategically navigate 
through the society that I currently live in right now, as opposed to constantly fighting for a utopia that does not yet exist. So when it comes to pretty privilege, the question that I ask myself is, what type of pretty privilege do I want? Why do I want pretty privilege? What do I want to use my pretty privilege for? And by the way, there are no wrong answers because it's your life. Something else that a lot of people say is, well, if you're so pretty, why aren't you a model? Why aren't you an actress? Why aren't you in Hollywood? Why aren't you uh, posting yourself on social media 24 seven? And it's like, not every pretty woman owes the world access to her beauty. So this is a part of why I personally am actually not a big fan of like Hollywood and stuff. I kind of feel like that would be stressful and a lot of pressure because your beauty is no longer your own. Your face is now plastered, you know, you're a public image. And so your face is now plastered everywhere. So if you change your face or if you change how you look or if you no longer look like you used to, other people are going to try to put all these pressures on you. You've got people wanting you to represent them. You've got people who will shame you if you change the way you look. So not every woman is going to use her pretty privilege in the same way. There are some women who want to um, show the world their beauty. So they want to promote their beauty in front of everyone. They want to be seen. They want to be a singer or an actress or whatever. And then there are other women who they simply want to enjoy their beauty for themselves. And they want to um, just be pretty every day. Just when they look in the mirror, they like how it makes them feel. I know that for me, if the rest of my life is fucked up, but then I look in the mirror and I see a beautiful woman staring back at me and she's, her waist is snatched and you know, her teeth are straight and white, her skin is smooth. What I'm thinking in my mind is, well, at least things aren't that bad. You know, at least I still look good or um, at least my body still looks nice. So for some women, they want to attain pretty privilege so that they can enjoy it themselves. You're, you're not obligated to use your beauty how others want you to use it. So if someone is mixed race and they know that a certain type of guy is attracted to them or whatever because of how they were born and they choose to utilize that to their advantage so that they can attain access to resources or so they can have a relationship or, you know, be with an attractive guy or whatever, then they have every right to do that. You cannot police other women's beauty. You can't try to control how another woman uses her beauty. And yes, Beauty is influenced by bad things such as fat phobia, you know, racism, prejudice, classism. I do believe that our beauty standards are influenced by bad things, but at the same time, some of us are still going to meet those beauty standards or maybe we were born meeting them or we were born being closer to the beauty standard. And so we feel like it's easier to just meet this beauty standard and attain that social power as opposed to social justice warrioring and hoping that the whole world changes tomorrow and we just live in a utopia. So the, the reason that I choose not to be a social justice warrior is because social justice warriors never really see the fruits of their labor or at least not as much as they would like to. So one thing that I've learned is that a lot of social justice warriors will spend their lives being a social justice warrior and then they will die not having realized all of the change that they were able to enact. So for example, think of all of the people that had to die in the civil rights movement so that we could have the rights that we have today. Of course, I'm very grateful for that, but not everyone has the mental capacity to deal with the daily traumas that come with being a social justice warrior. So arguing all the time, you know, protesting all the time, trying to make all these videos, uh, call out every single ism that you see, spending your life searching for all these isms so that you can bring light to them. And like I said, social justice warriors have their place, just like how everybody likes to talk shit about how we shouldn't have wars and we should have world peace. You talk shit about war, yet you are enjoying living in a country where you are protected by policemen and the men who are like veterans and stuff like that. You are protected by the people who have fought for you. So yes, some people choose to be fighters and other people are going to have the privilege of reaping the benefits of that fight. So I've noticed that the social justice warriors are usually fighting for a certain privilege or they're fighting for what they consider to be a privilege, but they believe that it shouldn't be a privilege. They believe that it should be their right to have that thing. 
So I've noticed that some women who do not fit today's beauty standards, they are fighting for pretty privilege and they're social justice warrioring for pretty privilege and they're social justice warrioring for social status or for notoriety in Hollywood. And that's fine. You have every right to do that. You should do that. That has its place. I am very happy for the women who look like me who have social climbed into Hollywood, you know, to kind of bring visibility to my phenotype. But you get to decide which struggle you want. You can either fight against the society that we live in, or you can learn how to strategically navigate through it. This channel teaches you how to strategically navigate through it. If you're looking for fighting strategies and, you know, how to um, argue with people and stuff, how to like try to change the world and make it into this utopia, this channel is not the one for you. I understand that I live in a society that thrives on lying or exploiting people or like doing bad things and kind of manipulating people's perception of you. I understand that this is how my society works. So if I'm smart enough to understand that people's perception of me affects how they treat me, then why would I not use my intelligence to navigate in a way that benefits me personally? There's a reason that they call it privilege. They call it privilege because you are receiving social benefits from looking pretty. You're receiving social benefits from being rich. So I can't help the fact that my society rewards wealth. So why are you shaming me for wanting money? Why are you shaming me for simply wanting to survive and thrive in the society that we live in? And also, the same women who shame me for having a certain privilege, they want me to use my status that I spent years trying to attain so that I can help them. And it's like, well, you were shaming me the whole time I was trying to get here. Like for the people who like to shame wealthy people, you shame them as they are attaining that wealth. And then as soon as your friend becomes wealthy, now you want to ask for money. Now you want to say, what are they getting you for your birthday? Anyway, I'm going on a tangent here. But when it comes to pretty privilege, there are many different types of beauty. Beauty is very subjective. So you want to ask yourself, what do I find beautiful and why? And just don't shame yourself for the answer because I do believe that everyone is going to be at least partially influenced by whatever the popular beauty standards are. So for example, for me, I think that straight white teeth are beautiful. I actually think that veneers are the most beautiful teeth. And I didn't realize that I had that bias until I recently kind of examined myself and like, what type of smile I find to be the most attractive. And I noticed that when I pulled up pictures of everyone who I viewed as having a good smile or having a pretty smile, they all happened to have veneers, whether they were super rich and famous or whether they were like influencers. So I was able to identify my own internal bias. And then I had to decide within myself, okay, am I okay with the fact that I think veneers technically look prettier than like natural teeth? Am I okay with that within myself? Am I okay with having that beauty standard? Okay. So now that I have accepted that that's what I think is pretty, maybe one day when I get old, I'm going to get some veneers. Or maybe one day if I get really rich, I'm going to just go ahead and have a perfect smile like that since that is my internal beauty standard. Has my beauty standard been affected by my environment? Absolutely. But am I going to shame myself for that? No, I'm not. Because me thinking that veneers are pretty, it doesn't mean that I think that natural teeth are ugly. By me getting veneers, I am not telling other people that they have to get veneers. And I've noticed that sometimes with social justice warriors where they get it wrong is they think that by you simply existing and having a different type of beauty than them or having a different opinion than them, they think that that makes you their enemy when it doesn't. Two things can be true at the same time. I can feel like I'm most beautiful with veneers, or I can feel like veneers are the most beautiful, and you get to feel like teeth with gaps and teeth that are yellow or no teeth are the most beautiful. Two things can be true at the same time. But when it comes to pretty privilege, you want to ask yourself, what type of pretty privilege do you want? So think of the most beautiful woman in the world. So it could be a celebrity, it can be somebody that you know personally. Um, for me, I've noticed that I actually don't have a standard, like I don't think of a certain celebrity as the most beautiful woman in the world, I notice that I have a combination of both women that I think are really pretty and my own internal personal taste 
of, you know, what type of body I think is the most pretty on me, by the way. When I say your internal beauty standard, I mean your internal beauty standard for yourself, not your beauty standard for others. Like, I don't shame other people who look different than me. I don't get mad because somebody else thinks blonde hair is the prettiest hair color. All of my beauty standards, I just impose them on myself. I don't try to impose them on others. But one thing that I've noticed is that sometimes with these women who make these videos against mixed black women, um, they like to use their internal beauty standard of dark skin, unambiguous women being beautiful. And then they try to impose that on you or they will even go as far as calling you ugly because you do not have their features. So if you're not dark skinned, you're ugly. If you're, if you don't have 4C hair, you're ugly. If you don't have, you know, the same facial features, some of them will call you ugly. So that's an example of trying to impose a beauty standard on others. Like when I see Hollywood media making uh, movies and stuff and the characters are, they're all conventionally thin. I don't necessarily take it as Hollywood thinks that fat people are ugly. That's too much of a generalization. One person does not control Hollywood. There are many different production companies. There are many different casting directors, many different um, promotion, like ways that they promote certain people. There are so many different types of actresses. How many fat women are trying to become actresses? You know what I mean? Like there are so many different factors that go into that. And so this is why I prefer social climbing because if I was really that passionate about Hollywood, what I would do, actually what I plan to do is if this channel ever gets like really famous, like if I ever get super rich, like filthy rich off of this channel, the next thing I am going to do is social climb into production, like real life production, making real life movies and stuff with women who look like me. So that's a form of social climbing. And then from my position at the top, you know, after I'm super rich or whatever, then I can utilize my money to create open doors for other people who look like me. That's just my way of doing it though. Other people will see it differently. So the reason that I don't shame Hollywood in particular is because I know deep down inside that if I had the same money or if I had access to influence Hollywood, I would do the same thing. I would influence Hollywood too. I would want to be seen as well. I would want my phenotype to be out there as well. I would wanna be viewed as pretty as well. So I don't shame women who do that and women who want to be models and stuff and then they they want to promote how they look. I don't shame Taylor Swift for trying to look pretty in the eyes of Hollywood because maybe she wants other women like her to look pretty as well. So I've noticed that some people hide behind being a social justice warrior and in reality it's like no, don't hate the player, hate the game. So instead of coming for the pretty privileged women, come for the people who created the beauty standards in the first place because it wasn't women. And it certainly wasn't mixed race women of color. But the way that I did it was I looked at each one of my features, so eyes, nose, lips, teeth, everything. And I thought to myself, do I feel like I have pretty privilege when it comes to my eyes? Okay, yes, I do. So why do I feel like I have that pretty privilege? Oh, is it because I have almond eyes? Is it because my eyes have like a very pretty canthal tilt? You know how they talk about the canthal tilt? Like if you're eyes point upwards or point downwards. So what makes my eyes pretty? Okay, do I have any pieces of my body that I feel do not have pretty privilege to the point where, you know, it's dragging me down or I feel like it's it looks bad? Okay, so do I feel like I have a big stomach and that is uh, making me go down a notch and it's making me insecure? Why don't I feel like my stomach is pretty? Oh, okay. It's because it hangs over my jeans. Why do I have a problem with my stomach hanging over my jeans? Oh, it's because deep down inside, I think that the influencer body type, kind of that slim hourglass body type, I think that that body type is the prettiest. That is my internal beauty standard. So asking yourself questions about what you like and why you like it, that's gonna help you determine what you truly believe pretty privilege is. And the same thing goes in reverse. What do I find ugly about myself? And you have to be very honest because I've noticed a lot of women, they won't admit that they find themselves ugly. And so they will just get mad when women find themselves pretty because they've, they've never experienced that. They think that they're ugly, but they just are not aware of the fact that they think they're ugly. And so encountering a person who thinks she's cute, that is something that is foreign to them. So then they will say it like it's a bad thing. Oh, you think you're cute. 
And they're saying that because it's the norm for them to think that they are ugly. So because they don't like their features, their facial features, their body, whatever, skin tone, hair texture, they get mad at you when you like yours because you're challenging their perception of themselves. And especially if you don't look like them and you like how you look, then that person is more likely to associate you liking how you look with looking different from them because once again, this all goes back to them thinking that they're naturally ugly. And by the way, I'm not shaming you if you think that you're ugly. I actually think that it's very healthy for you to be honest with yourself about you know where you're at right now, what do you truly think about yourself. So I'm not shaming women for feeling ugly. I feel ugly. If I have acne, I will admit to myself, hey, I think that I look ugly when I have bumps all over my face. I think that it looks ugly if my teeth are yellow. I think it looks ugly if I'm like very out of shape. I feel ugly if I have a double chin. So admitting those things to myself helps me to keep it under control because if I see that, you know, my body's getting out of line, I know, hey, wait a minute. I know that I think this is ugly. I don't want my self-esteem to go down. So let me make sure that I, you know, take care of my skin. But asking yourself what you think is pretty and what you think is ugly, that will help you decide what kind of pretty privilege you want. Who do you want to be pretty for? Who do you want to think you are pretty? Because that will give you an idea of what your idea of pretty privilege is centered around. And like I said, there's no wrong answer. So who do I want to think that I'm pretty? Society. So this means that my internal beauty standard is influenced by society's beauty standard. So, but I know that it's not all the way influenced by society's beauty standard because I don't look at anyone and say, you're the most beautiful girl in the world. Like, I wish I could trade bodies and faces with you. I don't look at anyone like that. So I don't have a specific person that I can pinpoint. For some people, they do. And this is why you see women who go and get plastic surgeries and they say, I want to look like Kim Kardashian. I want to look like so-and-so. It's because that person knows what their internal beauty standard is and their beauty standard is an actual person. For some people, it may not be a famous person. It could be your cousin, your sister, your friend. So you want to ask yourself, what is my beauty standard? Who do I think is the prettiest girl in the world? And why do I think she's the prettiest girl in the world? Who do I want to think I am pretty? Why do I want them to think I am pretty? So for me, my beauty standard is influenced by societal beauty standards because as a person who has experienced pretty privilege, I like the way, and by the way, I have also lost my pretty privilege before in the past. I've told stories about that. But as a person who has experienced pretty privilege, that was based on society's beauty standards, I liked the way that I was treated and I like the social power that I have as a person who benefits from pretty privilege. I talked in other videos about how beauty is social power. By the way, there's nothing wrong with wanting power. Um, why would I want to be a powerless person? You know how people say, oh, they're, you're just seeking after power. You're just seeking after control. You're just seeking after status. Well, yeah, why would I want to be a powerless, out of control person who has no status and who is like the scum of society? Why would I want to be the scum of the earth? No, of course I don't want to do that. So yes, you're absolutely right. I do want a sense of power, control, and status. But the thing is, I'm not trying to have control over other people. I'm not trying to like, you know, step on other people. But for the people who do feel like they're at the bottom, they already feel like they're stepped on. So this is why they can go for you so viciously because they have nothing to lose. They didn't have any status. They didn't have any power. So they can scream and throw rocks at you and then hide their hand because they know that nobody's checking for them anyway. And so this is why you'll never see me on this channel calling people ugly or calling women the names of animals because I actually do view myself as a person who has status and influence on YouTube. I put myself on a pedestal. So I actually hold myself to a higher standard to the point where, yes, I do think that I am better in the way that I communicate my disagreements with others, as opposed to some of these black women empowerment content creators. So because I put myself on a pedestal in terms of communication skills, you won't see me calling women the names of animals or calling women ugly and like putting women down and trying to um, ruin a woman's self-perception. You won't see me doing that on here because I do actually view myself as a person that has power. So why would I exercise my power in a mean way over someone who I perceive as being lower than me in terms of their own self-perception? 
and self-esteem. Why would I want to ruin their self-esteem further? But anyway, when it comes to choosing the type of pretty privilege that is right for you, you want to ask yourself, what beauty archetype do I feel fits me the best? Um, how far am I willing to go with changing myself? And this is why I don't actually have a lot of smoke for people who get plastic surgery, like Kylie Jenner, people like that, people who completely change their whole entire face, change their whole entire body, people who completely bleach their whole skin tone to the point where they're like unrecognizable, people who like drastically change themselves. The reason that I don't have as much smoke for those people is because what a lot of people actually don't realize is that those people, a lot of them are actually very self-aware. Because it takes a lot of honesty to admit to yourself, I think that my face is ugly, you know, I think my body is ugly, I think that my my hip, my waist to hip ratio, I don't like it. And then to have the courage to put money, like to put thousands of dollars, invest thousands of dollars into changing that, that actually takes a lot of courage. And then to deal with society shaming you for that for the rest of your life, but you don't give a fuck. Your power of not giving a fuck is so strong to the point where you don't even care if your own family members don't recognize you. You don't care that thousands of people will say, hey, Kylie, you have a new face. Hey, wow, what happened to your body? I didn't even recognize that that's you. Do you know how much guts it takes to even do that? Do you know how much courage you have to have to do something that drastic. And by the way, I'm not saying that um, that these people don't hate themselves or that like everybody who gets surgeries and stuff, that they love themselves because I, I do understand that some people do these things and they do not love themselves. But two things can be true at the same time. So there are some people who don't love themselves and that's why they change. And then there, there are other people who do love themselves and that's why they change into the best version of themselves. It's just that their best version of themselves was different than what you wanted them to be. You thought that Kylie was her best version of herself at her original face. So just because you put a rule on yourself that you can't change your face doesn't mean that Kylie put the same rules on herself. So you can say what you want. You can talk as much shit as you want, but plastic surgery is still a billion dollar industry. By the way, I'm not trying to like promote like, oh, you guys should get all these surgeries and stuff, but I'm just trying to, uh, I'm trying to bring nuance to the pretty privileged conversation because I actually do believe that beauty is a choice. I just believe that beauty is harder to attain for some people than others. Like for some people, they may have to pay a lot of money or get surgeries or lose a lot of weight. For other people, maybe you were born closer to what your internal beauty standard is. But I do think that overall, you can choose. You can pick and choose what you find is beautiful and you can also pick and choose what you want to look like. And then you can decide, am I willing to invest money? You know, am I willing to spend the next 10 years growing my hair out all the way down to my butt just so I can have long hair? No, I think I would rather just put my hair in a bun and then spend $20 on a wig than I have long hair tomorrow. You get to make those decisions. You get to decide how much of your time and resources you want to invest in looking the way you want to look. And by the way, I'm not saying that being pretty is like the most important thing in life. But one thing I did notice for myself, though, is that it is very important. And I actually think that for a lot of women, being pretty is more important than what they try to say. Like all those women that say, oh, beauty doesn't matter. And like, you should try to be beautiful on the inside. Yes, you should try to be beautiful on the inside. But you should also like some people want to be beautiful on the outside as well. And they should not be shamed for that. Because for a lot of people, it's not about the beauty. It's about the power. It's about the social power that is granted to you because of your beauty. Think about how many men, for example, are obsessed with beautiful women. Think about how many companies want a beautiful woman to represent them. Think about how many like jobs and stuff want a beautiful woman to do their customer service or to sell their houses for them. So for a lot of women, it's not just about being pretty in a shallow way. One thing that I don't like is how people try to associate beauty with being shallow and vapid and empty. No, being pretty is something that a lot of women use as a part of their social strategy. Anybody who denies that knows nothing about sociology, you know nothing about psychology, and you're lying to yourself. So I will forever promote being pretty if you want to be pretty and also deciding what kind of pretty you want. So for example, whenever somebody says, 
oh, you know, you want to look elegant and you want to look classy. The reason they're saying that is so you can benefit from classism. It's so you can manipulate people's perception and it's so people can associate you with a higher socioeconomic status. So for the people who get mad and say, well, you're only pretty because you benefit from XYZ isms, colorism, texturism, featureism, classism, you benefit from thin privilege. Anybody who gets mad because of that, they are a person who is just mad because you have the ability to utilize that in a strategic way and they don't. They don't know how to strategize with the way that they look. They don't know how to make themselves have pretty privilege with the way that they naturally look. And the bottom line is, that's another thing. Um, some people don't want to admit that for some people, you are not naturally, you just naturally do not meet the societal beauty standard or whatever, or you naturally do not meet any particular beauty standard, or maybe you do meet some beauty standards, but you don't like those beauty standards. So for example, when I was like overweight, I technically met the beauty standard for women who were like plus size because I still had a flatter stomach, you know, with like the hip to waist ratio thing, but I didn't like that type of pretty privilege. I did not want that particular type of pretty privilege because I didn't value that kind of pretty privilege as much as I valued the thin pretty privilege. So for some women, it's not even that they don't have pretty privilege. It's that they don't value the type of pretty privilege they have. And again, you're not wrong because you can decide what type of pretty privilege you feel is right for you. So like I said, think about the most pretty privileged person you can think of. Or if you can't think of anybody, think about what you find beautiful because everybody has a beauty standard, by the way. So for all the people saying, oh, beauty doesn't matter, uh, you can be ugly all you want, but if you don't get that pretty privilege, somebody else will. So you not seeking after a certain pretty privilege, it doesn't take away the beauty pedestal. All you're doing is willingly giving it to someone else. And this is why I say stop begging others to be your representation because if you beg others to be your representation of pretty privilege, you're never going to be satisfied. Who better to represent you than yourself? But anyway, what do you ladies think? What is your standard of pretty privilege? What type of pretty privilege do you want? Is there a certain type of pretty privilege that you feel is going to be more powerful for you? Let me know what you think in the comment section and I'll talk to you next time. Stay pretty ladies.